Hello friends, this video on cell, the unit of life, part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now a very interesting question that comes to our mind is how are different things organized inside the cell? Now we know that cell, they are not empty spaces with boundaries. We all know that because at the time of Robert Hooke itself, he saw that there was some fluid like substance inside and that is why he told that cells are filled with juices. But by now we know that they are not juices. There are many different components which are present inside the cell. Now the question is how are the how are all those components organized inside the cell? Is it like they are just randomly spread anywhere inside the cell or they are arranged in some specific pattern. Now, in order to understand this concept of organization inside the cell, let us take a very common example from our day to day life. So think of a scenario where a pile of books is lying in the room and you have been asked to find out your bio book from this pile of books. Do you think it's going to be easy? Not really because maybe there are, I mean in this picture maybe there are some 10-15 10, 10, books but you imagine that there are some 50 books lying in a room and they are all haphazardly messed up lying here and there and you have to find out your bio book amongst those 50 books. So it is going to take a long time, right? Because you will actually go through each and every book and you'll see whether it is your bio book or not. So the situation is going to be tough for you. Whereas in another case, let us suppose you have a rack where each shelf consists of books of a specific subject. For example, there are three shelves in the rack. The first shelf is for the maths book. The second shelf is for the physics books and the third shelf is for the bio books. So now let us suppose if somebody asks you to find out your bio book, it is going to be easy for you because you are not going to look into these two racks. You are just going to concentrate on the third rack and that to here you can see the label or the name of the book. So you can very easily identify which book you want and you can get it. So now the situation becomes simpler for you. Which one is a better situation? Obviously when the books are there in the rack. So you are happy now because you are very easily able to get what you want. So things are more organized in the second case. So in this case what is happening? Books are the objects which are to be organized within a room. So there is one option that they can just lie scattered throughout the room. And there is another option where they can lie, they can be put in separate compartments. So here you can see there was one compartment or one shelf for maths, one shelf for physics and one compartment for bio. So you can divide the room into different, different compartments and then you can put specific things into each of them to keep things more organized. So which is a better option? So similarly in case of a cell also, when you look at the internal structure of cell, there are some cells where all the components inside the cell are just randomly scattered inside the cell. Whereas there are some other type of cells where there are specific compartments inside the cell where specific components are located. So let us look at another example of similar kind. You have one plate where you have put everything together, fruits, vegetables, flowers, everything is there together on the same plate. So now if somebody wants only to pick the fruits or somebody wants to pick only the flowers, it is really difficult because it is all messy in one plate. But if you want, you can arrange the same plate, dividing it into compartments, something like this. The same plate is still there, but in that plate, you put small bowls. So instead of one plate having all the things, you have taken one plate with three bowls. One bowl is carrying all the fruits, the second bowl is carrying all the flowers and the third bowl is carrying all the vegetables. So now you have made compartments in the same plate. So compartmentalization makes things more organized. 
So here we are going to talk about compartmentalization of cell. So we'll see that there are many types of cells where the internal structure of the cell is divided into specific compartments. So we will talk about that a little later. So this was to explain you the concept of cell compartmentalization. Now this cell compartmentalization is not present in all types of cells. So here, this is how the cell compartmentalization happens. This is your cell. So if you look at the cross section of a cell, you see these numbering actually shows each compartment. So one is one compartment, two, three, four. So similarly, there are separate things in separate places and they are all bound by a boundary. There is a boundary for each of these parts. So what are these parts? These are nothing but the different cell organelles. So these compartments inside a cell. Now each compartment is surrounded by a membrane or a boundary to keep it distinct from everything else. And each compartment plays a specific role. So here you can see the list of all the cell organelles. Nucleolus, nucleus, ribosomes, vesicle, rough endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, cytoskeleton, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, vacuoles, cytosol, lysosome, centrioles and cell membrane. Now, I don't want to get into any of these right now because we will talk about each of them one by one. So, what I'm trying to say is inside the cell so many things are present. Now, when we started, I started talking from the discovery of cell. That time I said, that nobody knew anything about cell. It was Robert Hooke who could see those empty spaces with boundaries like the honeycomb structure and he named them as cells. But then that time also nobody knew what is there inside the cell. Over a period of time, different scientists started discovering different components of the cell. And today we have so many different components present inside a cell. Surprising, right? And interesting as well. So. Science is a mystery. You have a lot of things to get into or you can get into any depth you want as far as science is concerned. Okay, so now we will talk about each of these organelles a little later. Now we will see in what type of animals we see compartmentalization of cell and in what type of animals we don't see this concept because just now I told that cell compartmentalization doesn't happen everywhere. There are some animals where the cells are not compartmentalized. Inside the cells all the components are just scattered here and there. So let us thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.